Well, thank you for taking time to talk to me today. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, this is quite an accomplishment, this documentary. Like the Tony Hawk until the wheel fall, wheels fall off doc is just like everyone seems to love it. Um, I finally got a chance to watch it and was just very amazed by it. And But I have to imagine that your job composing for this film had a lot going on. Uh, yeah, you know, um, just because of who he is and the, you know, the, you know, the eyeballs that would be on it. Sure, it was a little intimidating at first. Um, uh, I was a little, and it's, it's, you know, for me, like, I feel like Tony Hawk, his career has kind of just been there for my whole life. You know, my whole adult life, it's kind of tracked where, you know what I mean? Cause you know, he's been around since I can remember being a kid, you know? And so it was cool to, and so seeing all the, the, the early footage and stuff, it just kind of took you through your whole life chronologically which was cool. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah, 100%, like, getting to see, like, those X Games things and all of that, and, like, realizing that his real becoming capital T, capital H, Tony Hawk, right. like, really definitely happened right as I was, like, going off to college and things like that. Yeah. Now, like, the story is incredibly emotional like there are a lot of very intense beats throughout this film and yeah. your score kind of goes with like the very emotional personal parts whereas like the sporting aspect of it is a, a ton of like classic like punk rock needle yeah. drops yeah how do you come in and out of that <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it's cool that you say that because I was, you know, if it were just a normal skate doc and the score would just be kind of background music for skater, you know, I, I don't think it would have been as effective. So they, they were fortunate to be able to get all those incredible songs. But also for them, then for me, I could really focus on kind of the inner stories and the emotional part. And that's really what I like to do. And so it was just for me, like the perfect because I feel like sometimes in documentaries, there's way too much music, there's way too much, and it becomes kind of wallpaper. So I feel like we were really able to be sparing in where, where the score comes in and out and, and try to not only not make it melodramatic, but also to um, kind of respect the songs and, and make it all kind of feel like of a piece a little bit, you know? And that's when I read some of the reviews that said that kind of the, the score felt at home among this. I, I took that as a compliment because you don't <laughs> want it to be like, oh, here's the sappy score moments. And then we just went from a replacement song and, you, you know, try to make it all feel organic of, of a piece and not so people don't feel manipulated. But, I, but, I, but on the other hand, I think the really interesting thing about this movie was how emotional it was for a skate document you know it wasn't just a sports documentary I feel like there was some real heart real you know moments um which was great it was really powerful yeah like I mean in addition to like the emotional moments that you see Tony going through I mean like there's Dwayne Peters own dealing with how he treated Tony Hawk but also how Tony treated him after the death of his son yeah. and it like all of those I you do a very great job of scoring and letting the words do a lot of the emotional lifting but I'm curious as to like how much the director like had input for you because like very notably the opening scene of that movie there's like you would think like most documentaries start off with like this big swell of music and like no yeah. like they lean into that the wheels aspect of it like that is the soundtrack right uh it was so powerful that first two minutes you know because you just don't you know something's gonna happen you know like no the first time I screened it I was like oh my god that was perfect don't and not that Sam was gonna put any music I mean Sam is uh, the director is super particular and meticulous and there's not a note that goes in that he's not aware of and has uh, <laughs> improved. No, I knew, I knew when I first met with him and uh, I knew he was, he, he's a musician and he knows it. And he's, and he said his roommate was John Bryan back in the day. I was like, Oh, okay. 
this is going to be a tough one. Like, this is not, you know what I mean? In, in the best way, you know, it was going to be a challenge to, to win him over. And that was, that, that was fun. But I, I feel like it was always how to be, you know, emotional without being manipulative and, and being as minimal as you possibly can, you know, like it be, because the, the, it's what they're saying that's most important. And I feel like there's a fine line. And if you step over it, then it becomes a soap opera or an after school special, you know what I mean? That becomes mm -hmm. super manipulative. So I felt like the, the, the way they're speaking and just the gravity of what they're saying was so heavy that to kind of let that be the lead vocal and kind of have the music support that. that that's the way I, honestly, that's the way I always think about this stuff. It's like, I'm the backing band the, and the dialogue is the singer, you know? And if you think of it that way, it changes the way, you're not trying to overshadow the, the dialogue because that's the most important thing. This story. Yeah, you don't want it to become what I've heard refer referred to as like sad Hulk music, you know, like at the end of the Incredible Hulk show where he's like walking away and it's like very emotionally manipulative, right. like where it's telling you how to feel. Yeah, and, and it's, it's always a fine line because anything is kind of, you know, influencing how you feel. And, you know, so people make comments like that and it's sometimes it's inevitable, but I, I hope that we kind of threaded that needle as good as we can. I mean, obviously at the last scene, we kind of went there a little bit bigger than but I feel like it was earned at that point, you know. Now, were you cutting to a finished doc? Because like, I know uh, from having read past interviews with you that you really enjoy working organically. Like you're not composing on a computer. Like, I mean, you have all of these instruments behind you here. I, I know you like to work. Like, yeah, I like to instrument. Yeah, yeah, I like to sit at something real and play it. Because I feel like, sitting at the computer just influences what you do too much by sound as opposed to by music. You know what I mean? Like it, it's easy to sit at the computer and get something that sounds acceptable because the sounds are, you know, we all have these sounds that make you sound better than you are. So I, I like to sit at the piano or the guitar or whatever and have like a tune, have, a, have something written before you sit down and put it as a picture on the computer, you know, just because I feel like you have that nugget of, because then it's in your head. Like, I feel like when you sit at the computer, it's not in your, like if you write something on piano, it's kind of kicking around in your head. And when you're walking around somewhere else, it, it's up there, you know? And I find that then when you sit down to the picture, you kind of have this sound in your head of what you're gonna, the, the raw material you're gonna kind of use to write the, the rest of the score. And I just find it makes it so much easier, so. Well, it's very interesting because I mean, like that approach like seems to dovetail very nicely with the way like Tony Hawk's approach to tricks are in the film, but also sort of like, just like the very v visceral nature of skateboarding. Like you see, you see people and especially him like fall to their knees repeatedly, like just like down, down, down. But like, it's that physical act of interacting with something is what brings the eventual success. Yeah, and I, that honestly, like conceptually, what I thought was so cool about the documentary and his story was it it kind of applies to anyone who's pursuing something in life. It, for him, it's skateboarding, but for me, it's music or you're an actor or you're a writer or anyone who's trying to do something that's kind of unorthodox or, you, you know, there's not a set way to do it. I think we all deal in, in some way with what he went through. You know, obviously, he's at a different level of the <laughs> magnitude of things. But, you know, anyone who's tried to be something, it, it's it's hard, you know, and there's a lot of time spent behind the scenes, like you're saying about him falling down, that there's a lot of woodshedding, there's a lot of rejection and failure and trying to figure out how you do what you want to do. And um, so I thought it was really cool to hear even someone of his stature still has to put in the time the way anyone else does, you know, and it doesn't, you know, and it's easy to look at Tony Hawk and say, he's the master of all this, but you realize that he didn't just get there magically. He put in a lot of work, that, which I feel like this documentary kind of showed some of that that you didn't know about before, you know? Usually you see the highlights on all these things, but you don't see the putting in the time and all the failures, you right. know? And, and when he finally hit the 900, you know, just seeing all the times that they, that he failed, it was, it was amazing. You know, it was, it was amazing to be able to see the failure and the determination to get the success. 
you know, because I think we, we're a lot of in society we're conditioned to see the success of it with the Instagrams and all the, you know what I mean? We see the highlights of everyone and not all the work that takes to get to the highlights, you know? Now, when you're working on a documentary such of this, such as this, like how does does how does or does your approach differ from when you're working on a series like Training Day or a, another like just regular feature? Right. Um, I don't know that it does in that you still sit with your iPhone and recording little bits at the piano and trying to come up with the raw material. But I feel like on something like this, it's a little more, um, it, all the music is more about the feeling than the, what you're seeing. You know, there, there's very few, I don't think any that it was really playing to picture. Whereas, you know, if you're doing something more action oriented or comedic even, it, so much of the music is determined by the picture and it, it's got to follow the picture. And so for me, I find it, freeing to just think about it emotionally, you know, to sit up and have a few tunes and just lay them up. And it's really how fast is this going to go against the scene or how slow is it? It's not, oh, I have to worry he's coming around the corner here and I have to sting it with something. I, I don't think I did that one time in the whole movie, which was kind of cool. So I, based on talking to you, I'm assuming that like this experience was a really enjoyable and exciting one for you. Like, it just seems like you you got a lot you got a lot as much out of scoring it as like I feel like I got watching it yeah yeah I, I mean when they had the premiere out here um when he got the 900 again um everyone knows he's gonna get it you, you know it's coming but somehow you know people stood up and cheered and it was like pretty damn cool you know and and the fact that we scored that with a sparse piano, you know, like totally the opposite of what you would think about this big heroic thing. Uh, <laughs> I felt like there were a lot of moments like that where, where I was just kind of like, thank God Sam is a very uh, particular and opinionated director and he, he wouldn't do anything that would be like the obvious or the, the cheesy way to do it. And he really held to his guns. He really had a vision of how he wanted to do this. So. Uh, it was cool working with someone that that opinionated and strong-minded. And also, I don't think I got any notes outside of Sam. You know, like these days, there's so many. You're working for these big conglomerates or Netflix and or what, whatever studio. And there's there's you know there's a lot of opinions. You know, everyone has thoughts about music. Um, but I feel like sometimes the thoughts kind of overshadow the director and the director's vision to me, since I've been, that was always the most important thing. That's the one you want to please, you know, and sometimes they'll take the notes and sometimes they won't. They'll always listen to them, but they have enough of a vision to say, I, I agree with that. Let's try that. I don't agree with that. We're not going to do that. Where on some things, you know, sometimes I feel like we're just playing catch up, trying to please a million people who have a million different opinions. <laughs> And I feel like eventually it becomes really watered down, like you lose kind of your perspective. But I don't, I don't feel like we ever got that on this with Sam um, because he knew what he wanted. He knew what he was going for. He knew how he wanted you to feel. And um, they let him do that, and which, was, which was very cool. Very, very cool. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak to me. This has been really enjoyable. I quite enjoyed your score. Um, and Thank again, Thanks. have a good Thanks rest. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Well, uh, have a good rest of your day. And again, thanks so much. You too. Talk soon. Thank Bye -bye. you.